surrounded by females yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Tony's wife Bree Bree thank you so much for coming to Maui and joining us here oh it's so beautiful here thanks for having me oh we really appreciate you you're such a beautiful woman with <laughs> a heart of gold I I picked that one up very quickly thank you so, and we had a great conversation today about having four children very close together <laughs> was yeah. lots of fun. So I'm sure you do get to use a lot of Tony's and yours. I'm sure you're part of it. Mm -hmm. This whole personal development thing with your oh, children. Yeah. And Every day. Um, the biggest thing for me with the personal development that we've learned is how I talk to my kids because I talk to them completely differently than um, I see other people talking to their children. For instance, um, the way somebody figures out who they are their parents instill in them as a, in a, a simple statement at such a small age, saying, mm -hmm. you know, either you can do it or you can't do it, or you're so great or you're not great. And I see this all the time when I look at parents and moms, you know, with their children. And the one thing that I do differently is I want my children to believe that they can be whoever they want to be or that they can grow up or that the things that they're doing are impactful and are wonderful. And so I make sure that I tell them that. Even if it's just scribbling on a piece of paper, this little picture of some stick thing, Mom, I did this for you, isn't this great? Yes, honey, that's beautiful. Oh, you're so wonderful at this. You're so great at this. And then they come back feeling, wow, I'm something great, instead of dismissing it as just, you know, a couple of lines on a piece of paper. It's one of the things that we've really tried to teach our kids is, uh, that they are not defined by what they do necessarily. Right. So, you know, as they're going to bed, we'll say to them, you know, you're a good boy, you're a good girl. And we've said it enough times now that as they're getting older, and we'll say that to them, I say it every night before they go to bed. You know, you're, you know, I say to my son, you're such a good boy. And his response now is, 
I know, Dad. <laughs> it, it was one night. It was so moving for me. One night, I went in. I was snuggling him before bed, and he, he put his arms around my neck, and I said, "You're a good boy." And he goes, "You're a good boy too, Daddy." And Aww. he, he patted me on the head. It was almost as a parent. That was just that was so moving. But I wanted them to, and we both have agreed with this. We wanted them to have the belief that they were good people, that they're not defined necessarily by their behavior, and if they misbehave. They're not going to associate that they're a bad person. They'll see the behavior doesn't serve them, rather than thinking that they're bad because of it. So it's something we want to instill in our kids. Uh, it's what we instill in the adults that go through the personal development. Yeah, I love that. That's yeah. great. I can't wait to go back to my grandchildren and use that one on them, because yeah. I absolutely see that they do consider who they are. Oh, yeah. You know, if they've done something naughty. Mm -hmm. You know, they start thinking of themselves as a bad right. person. They start to associate themselves with that, oh, I'm bad because of that behavior. Mm -hmm. And that's not true. They're not bad. Inherently, they are so good. Right. They just happen to act that way. Right. And so if you can separate those two, then they, they come out with such a great foundation of, wow, I'm a great person. Oh, but I made a mistake. Well, that's okay. Mistakes can be repaired. But the self-image, as Tony talked about, is such a fragile thing that you want to build it as best as you can knowing that they don't have to defend a self-image that isn't really who they are because they're not that active that action they're not you know those little things they are great like Tony says you know you're good you're a good boy yes I know and so they're just gonna think I'm good and either I act this way or act this way but it's not connected to who they are but the goodness is very well put into them, and mm -hmm. they know that, so they're not judging themselves from that place. That's really wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, we definitely haven't been perfect parents <laughs> by <laughs> yeah, any means. No. But, you know, we're doing the best we can. But that one piece for me, which and for Bria, is it's so critical that we want them to believe they're good people. And then the rest, they can do some personal development work on. <laughs> you and know? you are perfect parents because... It's all perfect, right? It is. You know, I, we're all, they're all getting what they need to get and what they need to learn. So tell me, how were you interested in this before you started working with your students and seeing how it affected them? I, I mean, <laughs> be, because you, when I was listening to your story, you started saying, well, it was because of them. But I just had the feeling that you were way interested in this before those things started happening. And where did that come from? And I want to hear what she's feeling. laughing about, but I know she's <laughs> going to tell some story about what you're doing. Okay, go for it. The interest for him with personal development started long, year, many years ago. I had that feeling. Um, for me, it came up, like, when we got married, we came from completely different families. And it was so interesting to see him compare his family to my family. Because we, you know, our families were opposites, and his family valued stuff that my family was like, well, that doesn't make any sense. And he's like, well, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, like, his family values really hard work. And my family's like, yeah, you have to work, but you play just as hard. And so when we got yeah, married. Yeah, my family values work over play, hands down. Right, so when we got married, and I'm like, okay, great, you, put, you worked, great, now we can play, right, honey? And he's like, no, we have to work harder. I'm like, well, you talking about it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I didn't know how to and so when we started comparing our upbringings and our background and then trying to mesh the two trying to figure out well why is your family right why is my family right what's going on with this that's when a lot of the personal development started coming into play of where did these belief systems come from where did the programming start yeah and see growing up in my family I didn't know some of the beliefs were kind of weird but once we got married you know I remember one time Right after we got married, we went shopping, and and she wanted to buy. She wanted to, it was grocery shopping. She wanted to buy a thing of fresh squeezed orange juice. You know, the it's not great. from concentrate, the good stuff. And I just emotionally did. I couldn't do it. I said, No, you can't get that stuff because I don't. You know, we had this this. You know, we grew up and, and my parents were frugal, and we drank orange juice out of the can. We did not drink the stuff out of the jug. Now, look, there were six kids in my family. I know my dad didn't buy it from the jug. <laughs> <laughs> it cost hundreds of dollars a month we bought it in the can. But I had gotten this belief that it wasn't okay 
that I wasn't good enough to actually get the fresh squeeze real orange juice. Right. And, you know, and, again, and she was just like, what are you talking about? Get this stuff. And it was this, it was this weird emotional thing where I was like, how do I do that? And this stuff started to show and up. we were in the middle of the grocery store having this conversation. And I'm like, well, why can't you do this? And he's like, I don't know, but emotionally, it just is it's too much. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do we make our money? We make our money, right? And he's like, well, yeah, of course. I'm like, so we can spend it on whatever we want to, right? Well, sure. Okay, we're getting this stuff from the jar, right? We're not going to buy this stuff from the can. And he was just like, like this whole new paradigm opened for him. Like, oh my gosh, I can, I have the ability to choose what I want to spend my money on and how I want to, you know, invest this and how I enjoy my life. And then he started going crazy <laughs> and, you know, buying juice, you know. Well, and I just, I had this shift in what was okay in my life. Right. You know, and I, now I've you only right. squeeze fresh oranges. Oh, bet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only the best now. But I wasn't comfortable with the best back then. And so it's, it's an interesting thing. It's something that small triggered where I started reading personal development books because all of a sudden I was like, wow, maybe those belief systems aren't necessarily the way it is. Maybe that was just my family's particular belief system. I started studying personal development. We both started studying together. And you know, it evolved over the last 10 years of studying and, and, and challenges and seminars and different things that we've done to, to where actually Bree is a coach as well. I coach a lot of people, but I recently had one of my students that wanted some relationship coaching, and I was just like, Call her. She's going to give you the advice. And so we're both in the in the in the industry as far as as far as doing that. Well, it's best to have. I mean, if one person in a relationship is working on personal development and learning things and, and expanding their self image, and their partner's not on that same wavelength, it right. gets a little difficult to be able to stretch that because then the partner's going to be like, no, 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 you got to stay in this circle. And the other one's like, but I want to be here or here. Right. And so for us, it's been in this incredible journey because we've been, we would go together and stretch each other. And so what's fun yeah, is... And there was happen. times when, when oh, yeah. one is ahead of the other. I, you know, I don't want to get the idea that we were, that it was always this perfect... No, and that's growing, natural but, progression. Yeah. Oh, but well, that is what together. a relationship is, right? Exactly. Right. What, one pulls the other up yep. and then the other yeah. pulls yeah. the and other. And then sometimes it's smooth sailing where you're together and you're like, wow, this is great. Absolutely. And then something happens and you're like, whoa. <laughs> that was the that's come from. But what's been beautiful is that we can help each other out with things, things that he is so great at, you know, I may not be the best at, and things that I'm really well at, Tony's like, oh, Brie, can you come over here and help me with this one? And so it's fabulous that way. That's fabulous, mm -hmm. yes. Well, you know, it's wonderful when we can see and we know what we're best at and what somebody else is best at. It's like thinking that one person is going to have the answer to all of our questions. They don't. Mm -hmm. And good for you that you've got that down. I'm, I'm very happy for you. Yeah. I love We're your We're definitely growing together. You know, that's yeah. the I love your interaction today, too. We, we, <laughs> we had a fabulous uh, intensive today where Tony was teaching. And, and he kept referring to Brie, and it was, it was almost like you were on stage with him. Yeah, she's a good sport, You know, too. you were so... <laughs> she's a good sport. So <laughs> well, just, you know, there's just so many jokes between us, and, and he's just so fun that... When it's, you know, all the jokes that he says and the things that he would infer, I just, get, I just think they're so hilarious, too. Because I, so. I love watching the reaction of the other people when they all look at me and be like, whoa, how should you <laughs> take that one? That's like, hey, that was great. <laughs> Let's hear the next one. The nice thing is I know if I cross the line, she's the one person in the room that will absolutely tell me so. She'll, <laughs> she'll be like, whoa. <laughs> 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 tell me this. I'm curious, I'm curious your take of the transcending technique oh, that you yeah. learned from Tom. Because we learned it. Tom came to our home and we learned it together. How has that changed with um, the interaction with the kids? We have four kids and <laughs> at times it can be, you know, anyone that has kids, mm -hmm. we have four that are close and it can be, yeah. it can be crazy. So I'm curious how that has, has changed because I know there's a lot of people that are dealing with the, the challenges of kids, which is unending attention that they need. Forever. How has that how has that impacted on your side of being able to be present? Because I've noticed well, that's a, a great question. Um, when we when I first heard of transcending came from Tony, um, and uh, 
I wasn't quite sure. Like my dad taught me how to meditate, and um, when I was younger, just you know to breathe and listen to your your breath and to slow down and to um, you know be grounded. I was very blessed to have um, a dad who taught me to be grounded. Yes. And um, I got grounded a lot too. <laughs> I no, wait, it doesn't sound like no. the same thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think it was different though. So when um, when I was introduced, when Tony told me about Tom and the transcending thing, I was like, well, let me talk to my dad because he, you know, he learned how to meditate and all that stuff. And so when my dad told me that he learned transcendental meditation when he was, oh, in his late twenties, um, everything clicked for me because my dad is so patient and so he just. I mean, like his reactions are really quick, like when he's driving and all these things and how he was able to, you know, one of the big things was how he was able to communicate with us kids and have a relationship with us and always be, like I only remember my dad yelling at me two times. Wow. Blowing his, head, his lid twice. Wow. Oh, and I totally deserved it. Um, when I was told that, I was like, wow. I want to be able to be that kind of parent for my kids because now I finally was able to have the tools to be able to be patient and grounded, grounding, not grounded, um, for my children because that's what I wanted them to have and have that kind of experience. So for me, I've been able to go into stressful situations with my children and be very calm and even keeled. And my and that's kids since, can that's see since that. Since you started practicing the transcending. Since I've been practicing the transcending. Um, and my kids totally sense that. And when they see me start to feel a little edgy, this is really fun. My kids are like, Mom, go, go meditate for 20 minutes and then come back, okay? Because they're like, hey, uh, we don't want to deal with this. So that's been fabulous. Yeah, it's been, it's been really, really good. Great. It's just really life-changing, really life-changing. Well, all of you parents out there, we, we really encourage you to have the same wonderful experience and around yourself meditate. And Jason, could you come say goodbye with us? Because we would love to, to just tell everybody here. Well, I just want to stick my head in. You know, the time just keeps running by. It's clear. We're going to have to have you back to Maui. Absolutely. Okay. Love it. Aren't these guys great? I Yay! really appreciate having you guys and appreciate you uh, taking the precious time while you're here on Maui. Thank you. And uh, thank you for you give us there at New Varish University. Absolutely. And uh, thank you for having a wonderful partner and happy to have you here with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to do this again. And you're both such beautiful people. We, we give you our mahalos, which you've probably learned by now. I think we should start thank giving you. one of these because we're getting to and be And now we're going to go. <laughs> Alo, do it with me from the heart. Alo, ha. We absolutely used every ounce of that tape. <laughs> <laughs>
And like I said yesterday, a dog fits the old self-image. Just get rid of the dog. <laughs> I'm a real dog lover. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> we have this dog. She's a sweet dog. See, that's the thing. Is she comes and looks my face, you know, and it's like, stink, stop it, stop. <laughs> but she's so sweet, and she's been peeing on my floors for nine years. You know what I mean? <laughs> nine years she's been peeing on my floors. Anyway. There's a dog that fits your self-image. There's, 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 there's all these other things that fit your self-image. Music and entertainment and clothes and all these things that fit the old self-image. And if you really want to create something new in your life and create this new outcome and this new possibility, you have to surround yourself with things that reinforce the self-image. Does that make sense? So we're going to get into some of that today. Um, talk a little bit about what Hi everyone, it's Sherry Tree, the badass yogini, that's what they call me now. So really, uh, I didn't really believe in any of this woo-woo stuff until I did it, and now I'm a huge fan. Because I went to Tom and Sherry Bell and learned the art and technique of transcending. Well, I didn't know what that meant, and uh, little did I know as I started to do it, it was much more simple than I thought, but it was deeper than I thought. And the effects that come from it, it's not really what happens during your transcending, although it's really quite liberating actually, but it's what happens to your life after you've done your TM for the day, that's what they call it, twice a day, just like the doctor ordered. And all of a sudden, my whole life started to organize itself. It's weird, imagine all these little planets going around and around, and it's like you put order to it. And there's a whole universe that opens up, and for me, I became way more effective, way more efficient. But the, probably the best thing I loved is, number one, I became much more peaceful, which is important because I sometimes get anxiety. I get so excited about everything. And number two, I got way more clear on my vision of what I want to create. And I realized I'm playing in a much smaller pond than I wanted to. And so all of a sudden, the universe is opening up ideas and possibilities that just keep flowing. And it's like, where did that come from? They just fall out of the sky right into my mind. And then I'm going and creating and manifesting them. And you sit and go, was that a coincidence? But what I realized was it was completely connected to every time I did my TM homework. So it's funny, in the beginning I had a really tough time doing it twice a day. Like Sherry and Tom, they'd come up to me and be like, are you doing it? Because I told them to hold me accountable. And that's another great thing about Tom and Sherry is they really take their students seriously. They really will help hold you accountable. You got to do the work though. And as I did it, uh, I didn't do it enough. But every time I did do it, I loved it. And then I'd let another month go by and I didn't do it. And I, I did it again and then I loved it again. And finally what I realized, my life got so like, you know, tough and anxiety and stress and opening up new markets, it's not all glory. And uh, I called them up, I started to cry. <laughs> and uh, that was Tom and Sherry's way of telling me the universe is gonna keep beating on me until I transcend. And sure enough, I became more committed to doing my TM, and everything started to calm down and get organized, and I've never had more peace, more vision, more focus and direction in my entire life than by doing my TM. So I put the Badass Yogi in my website. Now I'm on there is telling you, you got to do it. You got to hire him. I'm telling you it's worth every penny because it'll open up the rest of your future. Peace out, the Badass Yogini. Hi, I'm Tony Litster. And I'm Bree Litster. From Boise, Idaho. And I teach seminars for a living and, and coach for a living. I teach personal development and I teach real estate trainings. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the transcending technique that we learned from Tom Bell. It has, for me personally, really made a big difference in my life on being able to balance myself on a regular basis and create clarity in my life and a space that I can go to to rejuvenate. I do a lot of traveling and I have a lot of pressure uh, from work. And the transcending technique has been absolutely phenomenal in being able to let go of that stuff and, and enjoy the present, enjoy what I'm doing. It's also helped me with my creative side. I've been able to do some really fantastic creative projects and it gives me that space to get into that creativity. And on the financial side, what I found was once I started doing the transcending technique, I felt like I had a lot more emotional space in my life because I wasn't carrying everything. I was able to let go and as a result, I started to have physical space in my life with my business and 
and I started delegating a lot better and making a lot more money and doing less work in the process. And so it's financially been a huge benefit, but emotionally been even a bigger benefit. And I know my relationship with Bree, it has allowed us to let go of things that used to really bother us about each other. And we've been able to let go and not personalize things because the technique teaches us to let go of what's going on inside. For me, I help Tony manage the business and I manage our four children at home while he's gone on his business trips. And for me, learning the transcending technique has been very rejuvenating for me as a mom. I'm able to go into situations with my kids and be very calm and very peaceful about it, whereas before I learned how to um, transcend, I would be a lot more uptight and a lot more um, agitated by my children. Also, um, doing the practice twice a day for 20 minutes um, helps me to release my stress from the kids and from Tony's business and helps me to be able to have a lot more energy and physically I feel incredible and I don't I haven't felt um, having kids can take a lot of energy out of you having a husband that does a lot of business and traveling can take a lot out of you and so for me physically doing the practice twice a day for 20 minutes has given me energy to be able to take care of myself to tap into the things that I need and to be able to take feel like it's okay for me to take time for myself to rejuvenate which has been incredible for us in our relationship because I'm able to deal with us in a fresh palette and it's able for me to take care of my kids in a way that's very engaging and interacting with them and mom has a lot more energy and they love that. Yeah our kids if, if they notice that we're stressed they'll say why don't you guys go meditate so it's interesting that they've noticed that. Uh, I absolutely recommend learning the transcending technique. It's it's taken our life to a whole new level in every different way. What you do take that Maui style with you because if you need Maui style in Sister and brother I'm